we know from what we have learned from her that this is helping us build bipartisan support. Facebook has put profits ahead of people. My message for Mark Zuckerberg, your time of invading our privacy, promoting toxic content, and preying on children and teens is over. Hmm. Does no one else think the timing of this is just a little too convenient? Biden's on the ropes, and the Democrats are barreling toward a brutal beatdown in the midterm. Could this just be a clever way to rev up the speech police against alternative points of view ahead of the election? All under the guise of protecting the children. The reconciliation bill was a culmination of my service in Congress, because it was about the children. The children, the children, the children. They love citing the children. Well, let's begin with one basic fact. The left doesn't care if the culture or big business spreads content that's not appropriate for children. They never have. They literally do not care. In fact, for decades, liberals have defended, even celebrated, cultural and political forces that harm children. Porn, drugs, gambling, gender bending, school shutdowns, mask mandates, and of course, their holy grail of abortion. Democrats support all of it. Now, some on the left would prefer if we didn't even have children. A New York Magazine columnist named Emily Holloman recently called the decision to have children an essentially selfish one, done for fulfillment or self-betterment or boredom or peer pressure. Uh, we should pray for her because she knows not what she says. But the point is, after all they've done to damage our children and steal their innocence, we're supposed to trust them on the Facebook and Instagram issue? Color me skeptical. We've known for many years that parents should keep their kids off smartphones for as long as possible. We need to put our own phones down, myself included, and do the hard job of parenting in this very messed up world. Conservative parents have led the charge on these issues for as long as I can remember. But now suddenly, people like far left Senator Ed Markey agrees with staunch Republican Marsha Blackburn? And we're supposed to think that he's trustworthy? Not so fast. The fact is, Republicans may be walking straight into a trap. The left's real beef with Facebook has nothing to do with the children. The kids are on TikTok, aren't they? The left doesn't like Facebook because Facebook has refused to suppress all conservative speech. That's it. The left has decided to drive conservatives off of the internet and they're afraid Facebook won't be sufficiently loyal to their plans. They actually got away with banning the former president of the United States. And that's not enough power for the Democrats. They're that afraid of voters and free speech. Think about that for a minute. Now, this is why globalists don't mind China being in charge, frankly, because if they could, some of these really hardline Democrats would ban all dissenting opinions on social media. And just like China, they probably call it something like a threat to the social order or a threat to security or a threat to overall community or harmony. Now, this all makes sense if your goal is to maintain power by any means necessary. And let's face it, that's all they care about. Facebook could promote live sex acts and how to hunt a, <laughs> hunt a Christian instructionals. And the left would take their side. But because there's still some conservatives on Facebook, some conservatives, the left wants to shut it down. Democrats have seized upon the current Facebook scandal as an opportunity to silence conservatives for good. You know that the insurrection occurred January 6th. Do you think that Facebook turned off the safeguards because they were costing the company money? Facebook changed those safety defaults in the run-up to the election because they knew they were dangerous. And because they wanted that growth back, they wanted the acceleration of the platform back after the election, they, re they returned to their original defaults. And the fact that they had to, to break the glass on January 6th and turn them back on, I think that's deeply problematic. Agreed. If Democrats had a supermajority, they wouldn't work with Republicans at all on these issues. They just passed maybe legislation that has the effect of silencing all dissenting speech. It would be directed broadly across all media and online platforms, but cloaked in terms, again, of protecting national security or 
their new favorite, preventing domestic terrorism. They would pack the courts to approve that legislation, and your freedom of speech, a freedom that generations of Americans have fought to preserve, would be gone. That's their real goal, a land where we're silenced, and theirs are the only voices heard. But they're willing to get there, a little, you know, take a little bit of time to get there, so they'll use the bipartisan dust kicked up by one whistleblower as another nudge toward government control of political speech. Although they dispute the whistleblower's claims, Facebook responded by inviting government regulation, saying we need to create standard rules for the internet. It's time for Congress to act. Well, it kind of makes perfect sense. Remember, Zuckerberg himself was heavily and personally coordinating with liberal activists and poured hundreds of millions of dollars into local election offices in places like Pennsylvania. And after Zuckerberg was mercilessly scorned by the left for not silencing Trump in 2016, he kind of tried to make it up to his political comrades by keeping Trump's reach limited. Prediction. This is not going to end well for conservatives who want to challenge the left. Now, how do I know this? Look who's licking their chops at the prospect of Facebook regulation. Facebook ought to be seriously regulated. It is a new source for a vast part of our country today. If it continues the way it continues, we're going to have January 6th multiple, multiple times. It allows lies to be spread unchecked. Just like the big lie was spread around the world in large part because of social media. And none of it is true. We should not allow those things in our society. I do like the sweater, though. And what about the whistleblower herself? Who is she? What's her motivation for coming forward? She says she agreed to take the job only if she could work against misinformation. But after this past election, there was a turning point. They told us we're dissolving civic integrity. Like they basically said, oh, good, we, we made it through the election. There wasn't riots. Fast forward a couple months, we got the insurrection. And when they got rid of civic integrity, it was the moment where I was like, I don't trust that they're willing to actually invest 